Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to be uh, taking a look at Folklore the Affliction and uh, preparing our characters for uh, a campaign playthrough. Uh, in today's video we are going to actually I want to show you just briefly what I have come up with as my storage solution and then I want to go through the steps of creating um, the characters with you guys so as we continue on if this is something that is interesting to you we can continue and you know be posting the entire campaign on the channel or if people just want to see like character creation and one or two random scenarios that's fine too but um, as far as today is concerned we're going to take a look at how I've got everything organized in here because it could be kind of a mess and then we'll go through our steps of character creation so Without further ado, um, again, I received this game used through like a, a yard sale type thing at my friendly local game store. And um, it's the Kickstarter version, it's got the miniatures. I'm not sure if there was some stuff missing, but I've gone through and watched some unboxing videos and I feel like I have everything here. Um, but uh, it, it was definitely a mess when I got it. So rule books on top, pretty obvious. These two things here are what I added to the game after um, I purchased it. Uh, these are the um, character creation sheets, which you could print these out on your own, but I, you know, just they weren't that bad. So, um, but these, these are the critical thing here that I was like, I will not play until I have these where you can control your your Vita and your PowerPoints um, because you're supposed to be using these. And look at how close these numbers are. And you're supposed to just be sliding this up and down a point on your character card. I was like, no, it's not gonna happen. So I still have to find a spot for these. These actually fit really nicely right here. Uh, they sit on top of basically all of the um, you know, skirmish boards, character boards, you know, all these large size tarot size cards, which then sit above all of the uh, kind of character booklets. These right here are honestly one of the reasons why I was so interested in the game to begin with, because it, essentially this is everything you need for your character. It's got like your skill tree, your lore tree on the back, but it's also got like your starting cards where you don't technically need to pull them out. It tells you which starting cards, but it's basically like a screenshot of the starting card. So you really could just open this up and play with it like that. But um, so all my, you know, tarot sized card items are right there. Then I've got two of my constantly used um, storage boxes here from Michaels. And um, one of them has nothing but the um, kind of small size cards in them. And stacked up you can see there may be some more cards through other expansions but at least what came in the what I believe is the Kickstarter version of the base game fits in there side by side this is a little tight but the lid fits on there they literally don't move around uh, you know they're nice and flat let's take a look at what's in here so these are those tracker uh, boards I was talking about I have no intentions of using these whatsoever. Um, and those just happen to fit on top of all of the large size cards. Now, if you are planning or have sleeved your cards, obviously this setup is not gonna work for you. There's actually some room in there. You probably, without putting these in, could sleeve these and fit these in there, but you're not gonna fit all these like this in there. So if you plan on sleeving all these cards, this may not be the best storage solution for you. All right, um, I've got one of my kind of uh, double thickness small size bins here. This is holding all of my markers and all of my dice and my little meeple. You work that meeple around the map. Uh, but there are lots of dice, lots of various types of dice. I may actually even add you know, some of my own in here from my small collection of dice. Just So make sure like each character has one of their own color or something like that. But there's room in there to add some more dice. All the dice are in there. Uh, this, I believe, is a Kickstarter exclusive. This is the day and night marker. It also serves as the first player marker. There's a cardboard one in here. It's right in there. Uh, but this is like a nice, really heavy metal one. Um, I'm not super keen on the paint job of this. Just uh, you know, random soapbox moment here. It just, honestly, the, 
the cardboard looks better from a distance, but I do really like the weight of this and you know being able to pass it around. But what I've also put in here, I've decided since I have this bag, if you happen to have this bag, is the boons. Because you're going to be randomly drawing these when you get to, when you are rewarded a boon, you always randomly draw them. So I figured I'd just keep them in this bag, you know, shake them up and go in there and pull one out when I need one. So, um, you know, this during the game is going to be out and being passed around. So, and storing them, they can just share the bag there. I think it's okay. All right. So then we have, uh, again, one of our kind of medium sized or whatever small size whatever again I use these in a ton of my storage solutions there will be a link in the description below this smaller size one here allows you to pull out the walls so I was able to pull out the walls right here which allows me to get those bigger tokens in uh, stored in there but basically everything else is in here so not everything every unique token has its own spot but um, you know it's all in here and things are relatively sorted together so you know it all makes sense I, there's a lot of tokens that are going to be pulled out throughout the you know the campaign and i, I think you just kind of kind of have to pull out what you need and so on and so forth so there's that that sits nicely sharing the box with the main board so if you're like me and you just have the main board you don't have the uh, play mat or anything like that Again, this is mainly to just walk around that little meeple around. You travel on the road or you travel through the, this just tells you where you're going. Not a huge part of the game, but you obviously need to have it. Then you've got all of your scenario or battle mats, whatever you want to call them. Um, these are really just kind of thick cardstock. They're not cardboard. So you definitely want to make sure that they are sitting flat on something so that they don't get bent keeping them in a plastic bag is also going to keep them from getting bent so you know these are all sitting on the bottom now some of you may be wondering well where are the miniatures well this is the key this is the the trick that i think a lot of people can um take from this this is a piece of chipboard that i have i just had this on hand but you can get this on amazon you can get this at any craft store if you are into producing your own like game components doing a lot of print and play stuff this stuff is great for if you print out a sticker sheet of you know if you're trying to make tokens like this say right and you don't you don't want to cut up a cardboard box or something like that that would look cheap get you some a package of chipboard it's like ten dollars and i got like 30 sheets and i'm may never use all of them but anyways it's a nice stiff surface and these particular sheets that I have off of Amazon just happen to be this exact perfect size. So I just cut a little finger hole out here so I can actually get my uh, finger underneath oh, and lift it up. But it is covering up and protecting all of my miniatures. Now, two things. When you do the unboxing of this game, from what I can understand, it does not have a cover on it. Who does not put a cover on a setup like this? It's just sitting on top. And maybe like the instruction manual. I don't even think the instruction manuals are on top. But you're meant to just have this on top of everything else so that the miniatures don't get crushed. And you're always having to pull this tray out to get to everything else underneath. No, 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 no. That's not how we roll in this household. So um, by simply taking this 12 by 12 piece of chipboard, cutting out a little notch from my finger, I have now created a nice flat surface that protects the miniatures allows me to stack all the other game components on top then when I'm ready to play I just pull this out and I can set this box lid off to the side I don't actually have to physically pull this tray out which was kind of a pain the first few times I did it so that was my biggest uh, thing I wanted to show off for you guys was literally go out and get you a package of this 12 by 12 chipboard stuff cut a little notch in one put your miniatures on the bottom and drop that there on top all right, so I'm going to clean this all up now, and then we're going to go through the character creation process. We're going to pick up some characters, um, and if you guys have any suggestions, once we kind of will loosely narrow things down, if you guys have any suggestions as to like the uh, direction, the lore tree direction, uh, focus, I believe it's called, or something like that, that we should go in, things like that, um, please let me know in the comment section below. So let's come right back here. 
Okay, so I went ahead and read through all of the six different characters that come uh, with this base set and narrowed it down to three. I plan on playing a three-player game, or you know, solo three-handed game. So these are the characters I want to go with. If you have a compelling argument against uh, one of these, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I can always set one aside for now. Um, uh, but for right now, we're going to go with the arcanist the witch hunter and the archaeologist i was strongly considering the um avenging wild man uh just for his ability to you know focus on particular types of monsters and do that um additional damage but um the reason why i i'm not super keen on the whole bounty hunter thing rolling uh, a, you know um randomly rolling for to see who your bounty's on but it could be fun way to gain some additional coin but the biggest thing is that he has the um, ranged crossbow so I really wanted someone in the party with a ranged weapon so that's why we went with the witch hunter and I feel like these two guys are, are both pretty solid my biggest drawback um, between these two is they have very similar skills which we'll uh, we'll talk about here in a second but for now uh, what I have gone ahead and done is started to fill out the character sheets here and so i just wanted to go over a few things with you guys so um this character sheet covers a lot of stuff um you know there is a lot of of numbers on here a lot of information so but first off uh, this is just going to remind me this is the arcana sheet and for now i'm thinking we're going to go with the focus of seeker um i really like having this this aura option to be able to give you like a ring of protection. I'm not as keen on being able to reroll dice. I feel like there's probably, you know, like an item or something that can help me out with that down the, the road. But this I feel like is kind of only going to be found um, through the seeker focus. I could be wrong. So again, if you have uh, a reasoning why you would want me to go with numerologist, uh, please let me know in the comment section. But um, at first I started to write down all her keywords here, which can be found on her character sheet, but then I was like, why? This is always gonna be in front of me. I believe this is meant to write down any additional keywords that you may earn throughout the campaign so that you always have these three written down and then you have additional keywords that you don't wanna forget about. So I'm guessing that's what this is for. Name, I could write my name here, but uh, that'd be silly, I'm, I'm the only one playing. Then what I've gone ahead and done is gone through and written down their base uh, stats here based on their character sheet here. So some of these are pluses, but I believe that might and like damage bonus are always going to be a plus. They're not going to be necessarily a base stat. They're always going to be a plus or minus stat. So the only thing that really has any additional modifier at the moment is her might, because we can see, if we look on her character card here, if we go and actually find the stiletto, it's gonna tell her that she rolls she gets plus four might so what i'm assuming is that you know item we write the four here and again i need to dive deeper into the rules but i'm guessing that she's always going to get you know this might bonus and my question is if she does a ritual if she does a spell that might can be included she's not going to be using the stiletto but you know uh, so if anybody could answer me in the comment section, do I basically just write a seven for here right now? Now, items in this box are definitely gonna be, you know, erased and, and renewed as, you know, I might get a mod or change an item. But for right now, I could go down and write 21, five, seven, obviously is the only one that's been modified, two, four, and 37. I think I'm just gonna wait, because right now I don't need to know anything other than this. Everything else is right there on my character card. Same thing with the, archaeology, uh, nerve, and occult. These are all just plus bonuses that are on my sheet. I've gone ahead and written them here, but I'm assuming this is more for as I start to accumulate lots of items and, and other statistics as I start to go through uh, my lore tree here and be getting, um, you know, here's plus five might here. So I'm assuming this would be like a mod that I would add five here. Um, so it, it's not super clear. Um, it's a little disappointing that in the rule book they simply say, all right, here are, um, you know, here's a photocopyable sheet that you can photocopy and then make copies of, print out, yada, 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 so you don't have to buy the pad. 
but they don't really go through how to fill this out. They just highlight and say, all right, put your name here, put the character in focus. Well, those are all obvious. You know, I feel like they just pointed out the obvious in um, at, at the end of this rule book here. So if you have any recommendations on, uh, or any insight as to whether or not I'm doing this correctly, please let me know. The backside appears to, um, really just kind of be two things. I could go ahead and write everything out. I don't know if I will, unless I feel like I'm gonna be putting the game away and I'm worried about losing track of, um, you know, what items I'm carrying, what rituals I have, consumables. Um, I will probably keep up with my lore progression here, um, but then save everything else for if I put the game away. But I also may try and store everything away where all the cards and everything are together and then I don't have to go back and pull them back out again. So I'm thinking that for the most part, we are gonna be focused on this front side of the sheet here. And again, I'm gonna go with the Arcanist and I'm thinking Seeker for right now. If you feel strongly that this was a poor choice, please let me know in the comment section below. And then like I said, most everything else we need to know right here uh, are all these statistics. So for example, Vita, this is our health points. You know, this is what, uh, if we'll be tracking that on one of those trackers I purchased, as I get hit, it'll drop. Uh, this is technically our base. Now we can go higher than that or we could gain items that will improve our base, but for the most part, we're not gonna be able to heal up to this under normal circumstances. Same thing with defense. This is the number that uh, with two tens dies, the opposition is gonna have to roll to actually hit us. So even to hit us, it's gonna have to roll better than 37. That's not hugely high, but I'm assuming we're gonna be able to gain items, armor and stuff then add to this number here, which will increase our overall defense. Now, anything that you see with a plus on it is going to be added to your dice rolls. So for example, might, I when I roll to attack someone else and I'm trying to break their defense, I will be able to add plus three to it. Um, now, I'll actually be able to add plus seven to it, assuming I'm attacking with the stiletto. So say I roll a 30, on the dice, I'll actually be at a 37 if I'm attacking with the stiletto. Same thing with the damage bonus. If I actually get through to them, I will do an additional two points of damage plus you know whatever my base damage was, which should be on, um, you know, I guess just a standard attack will do one point of damage because uh, that doesn't say here on the stiletto. So. But what I wanted to point out, my biggest reasoning for considering not going with the Witch Hunter is the fact that these skills right here match up um, very closely with these skills here. So you can see Nerve and Occult. Basically, um, I'm really gonna be super good at Nerve and Occult. I'm not really spreading, uh, you know, if I come across skill checks for these other things. And also here you can see the Archaeologist obviously is good in Archaeology and so is the Ar Arcanist. So I have not really spread out my skills yet. Um, so again, if you feel like if you have experience with the game and I'm really kind of pigeonholing myself here with only having one, two, three, four, five, six unique skills out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess that's not so bad. But if I come into somewhere where I need to check awareness or ecology or speech, I'm screwed because I don't have anybody who's going to be good in those uh, areas. So um, let me know, but let's move on here. So that was the Arcanist. <clears throat> so there's her sheet here. See, we can we can keep everything in this, in this nice handy dandy booklet here. Keep it all together. All right, um, then that's a blank sheet. Let's move on to the archeologist who we are gonna go with the scholar approach. So um, I feel like this is, it's not always gonna hit, but if I can focus on building up my archeologist or my archeology span skill with my archeologist, I can uh, really make myself a tank. So that's kind of why I was wanting to go with the scholar focus here is to make sure that I can really pass archeology span skill tests easily, get plus five defense um, against that individual and then throw myself up at the front of the battles and soak up all the damage. So if you feel like Explore is a better option, again, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and basically I completed this sheet throughout uh, just like I did the Arcanist. 
I'm not really sure why it. I have to bother circling what character this is, but this was the second character I chose, so I went ahead and circled that. Again, if you know what the purpose of this, because the you know party leader or you know first player token is going to get passed around, so why does it matter whether um, I have circled that correctly? And again, here is his character card. Um, you know, we've already talked about how all this uh, all this information works. So, all right, so let's put his stuff off to the side. And last but not least is our witch hunter, who. Um, the Inquisitor option was very curious to me. Um, basically, being able to not kill someone and interrogate them, but I really, you know, this was so luck based at the end of the day um, that you could really basically lose out on not killing them and then they escape or you have to make the final blow again. I really just didn't want to deal with, you know, doing poorly on this roll. I feel like I would have been really frustrated if I got to the point where I was close to killing something then decided to inquire more about it. And it's not like, um, you know, I, I feel like if this was a video game, this might be a better option to choose because then the video game could actually spit out useful information. I don't feel like I'm going to get useful information I'm just gonna get like the best plus five might so I'm gonna go with the bounty hunter which I feel like just might be a fun way to earn additional coin suit the the bounty hunter with some really slick stuff um, also as I discussed before he will have the one ranged weapon um, and also I really liked this stat gain plus five might with ranged weapons during the first round of combat so essentially it's like who do I want to hit first what's the most important shot of the game make that my first shot and get a really good start in um, you know combat here is his sheet uh, again there's you know nothing new here I made him character three we're gonna go with bounty hunter if you feel like inquisitor is too good to pass up let me know or if you feel like witch hunter is uh, I'd be better off with say avenging wild man spreading out my skills let me know that in the comment section below uh, one other thing I really liked about the Witch Hunter was he has a really cool miniature. Um, if you see down here, he's got his like sword in one hand. He's wielding that crossbow with one hand. So very dynamic looking character. I'm not too keen on this, him, whatever he's doing in this shot. That This kind of reminds me of Blue Steel. Um, for those of you who know what I'm talking about there, um, we'll leave that little Easter egg. But that's what I think about when I look at the Witch Hunter there. So... Um, but anyways, if you feel like I've made a poor choice in any of these selections, uh, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Again, um, my hope is to um, be putting uh, many, if not all, of the um, campaign play on to, um, onto the channel. So uh, a continuing adventure for the channel for people to follow up on. Um, but for now, um, that has been enough. I do need to kind of go through the rule book at this point and make sure I understand how things need to work. I have a general understanding, but um, so I need to get through this rule book before we continue on. But that was enough of a, a process right there. And for a game like this, um, you know, this is definitely the first step. Don't feel like just creating your characters, you, you have not played the game yet because... Um, I feel like now I'm much more invested in the game having created my characters. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, including a Folklore the Affliction campaign for the channel, please uh, consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments section below if that's something you want to see. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.